In this video, we're going to focus just on this one apartment unit type in Rhino and sending these elements across into Revit. So the first thing that we'll do is since this is already blocked as a unit um, to separate it from the other units in Rhino uh, is open up this block and within it, we have all of these additional blocks. Um, we're going to select the objects by layer and use conveyor to send those over. Uh, so the first type that we will send is the walls and we can select all of the sublayer objects. So each one of these has already been set to a type in conveyor. And we have a curtain wall here that has curtain wall mullions assigned to it, um, some exterior walls, these dividing walls between the units and the interior walls. We can navigate to the conveyor tab. I'll be going back and forth between these. You could also pull the conveyor window out uh, if you did not want to go back and forth. Um, but in order to save some space on the screen and make things a little bit easier to see, I will, I will leave it here in place. Uh, so these have already been set up. You won't be able to change the category or type once you're working inside of a block. If you did have to change the category or type, you could change the layer within this conveyor uh, sub-layer menu. Um, for example, if we needed to change any of these to a different type, we could just you know select on this and type change uh, to current layer. Um, or you could, you could change the layer in the properties menu. So coming back over to our conveyor panel and selecting this Rhino and Revit direct method, since we are using Rhino inside of Revit, we can make sure these objects are selected. Um, drop down on the settings menu here. And this allows us to see this, this family import type, which will become more important as we do other types of objects that we're sending across. Uh, but this all looks good and we can hit send to Revit. And now these objects are going to be loading. So now if I move this out of the way, you'll see that the objects have loaded directly into the space. Um, the horizontal and vertical mullions have been applied to the curtain wall element. The exterior walls have their materials applied. Um, all of these wall settings are going to be according to the wall type that's been selected when you've done the configuration. Um, these interior walls are there. Uh, it's important maybe to note also that some of the walls as they're drawn extend all the way up to the next level. Um, and some of them are stopping shy where they'd be stopping at the ceiling. Uh, and that's all coming across correctly. Um, so there we go. That's our first pass is just sending these walls across. So the next objects that we're going to send across are the doors. And you'll notice in the model that the doors are not modeled very realistically. Um, these are going to come across as placeholder direct shapes into Revit. Currently, the doors, as you'll note here with the layer name, are only able to be imported as direct shapes. This has to do with the hosting requirements for door elements within walls. And by importing these more simplified uh, placeholder objects, it'll be really easy for us to switch these out with realistic doors once they're on the other side. So let's go ahead and with both of these selected, send them to Revit. And now they've come across as direct shapes. If I jump into a floor plan, we can see these doors and I have a filter set up on this view type, which I can show you very quickly. Okay. So here is the filter. What we're doing here is we're just highlighting any type of door that's coming in um, with a Rhino GUID. And uh, this is just going to be a way that I can quickly assess as I'm importing these things, um, which of the elements will need to be replaced. So then within the floor plan, um, we can see these doors. If we select on them, 
because of the uh, the name of the door, we'll be able to tell which type of door it needs to be replaced with. So a uh, single door, 36 wide, 84 tall. Um, we can go into the architecture panel and find the appropriate door and place it in place. Um, and again, because this is modular and it's going to uh, be distributed throughout the whole model, you only have to do this once for each of the unit types. And uh, it's a pretty quick process. And with that, I can go back to our importing view here. So now we have our Revit doors in place. We'll continue on to the next layer. We'll do our casework next. So we'll select all of our casework objects. Again, these have already been configured for conveyor and go to our conveyor menu. And with casework, you could choose to either import as families or direct shapes. Um, I'm going to choose to use direct shapes so that they can be edited again on the Revit side. And for each of these, we don't necessarily need to create a, a separate family. Um, if we wanted to later replace some of the casework elements with a full family that's already developed in Revit, that would be pretty simple, just like I've done with the doors, and you could select each individual object and replace it. Um, that being said, you could choose to import these as families. It might just take it another second and be aware that for each individual object uh, that's not blocked and distributed as a block instance in Rhino, that's going to come across as a brand new family. Um, so for example, these two cabinets here are the same width and height and have presumably all of the same elements within them, um, but those would come across as two separate families since they're not individual block instances within this unit block. And with that, I can hit send to Revit. So each of these elements are imported here. And again, you could um, select them and make edits as needed. And even within our Proving Ground tab, if you wanted to change the direct shape material, um, we have options to do that, as well as replacing these with more detailed objects. Um, but you'll see that each one has come across and uh, even the, the bathroom vanity has come across with some of the, the plumbing elements because that's all part of the same casework block in Rhino. Okay, for the next layer, we can send across the specialty equipment. And for these, because each one is kind of its own individual object, it makes a lot of sense to send these as families. So each of these is going to come across as a brand new family that's being created by Conveyor in Revit um, as it's being imported. So we'll send these to Revit. This window is asking if we want to load these Rhino block definitions. So each of these are going to come in as their families. Um, if you're loading in objects that are not blocked, they will create a family, but not necessarily load the block definition. Something that's important to note with the block definition is the transformations that you're performing on the blocks that you're instantiating um, can become a little bit uh, uh, tricky. Sometimes the mirroring components aren't necessarily recognized by Revit, and uh, it's a little bit peculiar, but objects that have been rotated 180 degrees, uh, that rotation is often not recognized by Revit as it's being brought in. So if you're noticing that things aren't necessarily coming in with the, the correct rotation or the correct mirroring, it's probably related to block transformations. And if you need help working through those, you can always reach out to us or check our website, our documentation website, for tips and tricks for dealing with block transformations. Oh, 
Okay, and we can see here that each of these objects is imported. It looks like they are in the correct position. Uh, so we should be good to go to the next category. So I believe all that we might have left is furniture and we can again just select the furniture category, select all of those objects, go to the conveyor menu, we'll use families for the furniture, the ones that are repeating are individually blocked, and we can select send to Revit. All right, now we have everything imported um, from our unit here over into this space where this uh, unit placeholder group exists. Um, so the next step will be we want to add these elements to the unit group. And the easiest way for us to be able to do that all at once is to group actually the elements. Um, so let's go and filter this. It'll probably be the easiest way to omit this model group uh, and hit OK. So we're grouping these elements together because otherwise we would have to individually select all of these um, individual pieces that are coming over from Rhino. And we can just call this uh, any name. So we're going to ungroup it once it's brought into the primary group. Um, so there we have that group. And if we tab to select, um, we have our, our main model group that's been instantiated throughout the model. So we can now go into this group and we're going to add to it in Revit. And we'll add the new group that we just created and that hit finish. Aha, and we're getting an error. I'll show us how to fix that error here in a second. So we have this group. It's been pushed to all the other groups. Let's go back in and edit this one to, to get rid of that error. Um, so because these units are all going to be touching each other and there's walls on both sides, each of those walls are overlapping as it's touching the next unit. Um, and we have this group within a group. So first I'll ungroup that temporary group. Um, it's giving me a warning that details will be deleted. We didn't create any details, so that's fine. And then I will delete one of these walls. Um, and then I'll just remember for all of my units to always delete the wall that's on this side of the unit. And it will um, resolve the issues that we're seeing with those overlapping walls. And hit finish. And let's not worry about these rooms at this moment. So there we go. We have this unit type pushed throughout the whole model. Um, so that whole process probably took about, you know, between five and 10 minutes to be able to convert these over. It would go faster if I was not um, speaking and explaining everything. Uh, it's, it's a pretty fast process. And once you do that with the other unit types, you'll end up with a fully populated model. So all of our curtain wall elements are coming in, all of our exterior wall elements. Um, and if I actually go to this highlighted view that I've created, everything that you're seeing in magenta here is coming over from Rhino. Uh, I'll show you this, this trellis element in a later video. Um, so, so don't get distracted by that. We didn't push that one in yet, but all of these group elements are coming from these unit blocks that are in Rhino. The entire process of bringing these over again is probably something that would take you, you know, maybe five to 10 minutes and you're not having to recreate any of your previous content. So, you know, a lot of these elements are coming from a SketchUp library. They've been designed in in Rhino as these individual units and then propagated throughout your Revit model.